Hey, muchachos and muchachas, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to tell you a little bit about failure in double shear. Now to get started, let's remind ourselves what shear is, and let's talk about single shear and double shear. So shear is just when uh, one part of an object tries to slide across another one. So shear forces are everywhere. When you're driving along on the road and you hit the brakes on your car and you slow down, well, the force between the wheel and the ground below it, that's a shear force. So we see those every day. So what's single shear and double shear? Well, let's talk about a pin that's in shear. Now, a pin is just a round cylinder, usually metal, and we use them to hold things together absolutely all the time. You, you see these around you all the time. So there's a, there's a metal pin. And let's say that one side of the pin is, has a force down, and the other side of the pin has a force up. Well, there's a surface, an imaginary surface, I guess, inside that pin, and that surface is in shear. Here's how I know. Well, let's break this apart and draw the free body diagrams of each part. So I'm going to go over here, try not to trip all over this stuff in my office here. Now, I'm going to draw this as if I'm looking from the front. That's terrible. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay, well that's less terrible. So the external force is here, and here on this side, and I'll get out of my way, your way here in a second. Let me just draw those. Okay, those are the external forces. Those are coming in from the outside. So there has to be some force, some internal forces here to balance that if it's going to be in static equilibrium. Well, that means there has to be a force across this face up and a force across that face down. Now, this is an imaginary cut. You're not actually cutting the pin in two. Well, you're not trying to cut the pin in two. If it fails, you really can shear a pin in two. And if you look at machinery, you will see things called shear pins. And they get used as like a mechanical fuse. You put a shear pin in a machine, and you purposely make that the weakest part of the machine so that if it's going to fail anywhere because of mechanical loads, it fails there. Well, shear pins are designed to be replaced. So if you overstress the machine, the shear pin breaks, the machine stops working, you stop, you replace the shear pin. So just like a fuse in an electrical circuit, shear pins can act like mechanical fuses. Well, where do we find pins in single shear? How about this? This is a guitar. I'm going to take my tuner off it, I guess. Right up here, there's these little, these things called tuning pegs or machine heads or tuners, whatever you want to call them. And they're, they've got a gearbox on the back, and there's a shaft that goes through the headstock. Well, the string is pulling on the top of that little pin, and the rest of the pin is secured inside this part here called the headstock. These six little posts are called tuning posts. Every one of those is in single shear, so there you go. have my longboard. Let me get my longboard. Okay, here's my very swoopy aluminum longboard. See these wheels here? These are what keep, you know, keep it rolling across the ground. And there are axles coming in from this part here. It's called the truck, and there's these steel axles that go through it. Well, when I'm riding this thing, the force on the ground is this way, and the force back from the truck is that way, and these axles are in single shear. Another example. So what's double shear? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Let's get rid of this. And let's draw conceptually a pin that's in double shear. So I've got the same kind of pin, and I'll draw it from the front here. Okay, and so I've got maybe a force down on the ends and up in the middle. So if that's F, that's F, that has to be 2F. Remember, it's got to be in static equilibrium. Well, where do you see stuff like that? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to go with approximately everywhere. What about the axle on a bicycle? The forks push down, the wheel pushes up. That's double shear. So we imagine there's a shear face there and a shear face there. We've got shear forces across that face. That's double shear. So what does this look like when we experience a shear failure? 
Well, in an uh, experiment a couple weeks ago, uh, my student and I saw a perfect textbook case of sheer failure, and I want to tell you about it. So she was doing a, a pull test on some bolts and using this very heavy clamp mechanism. And the clamp was held, to, uh, held into the machine by a shear pin, one on the bottom and one on the top. And we actually exceeded the stress limits of that shear pin. One of them failed and the other one almost failed. So here's what the clamp looks like. And the important part is how it's held into the test machine. So let's go back to the picture again, and you can see there's a threaded stud in the, on one end of the clamp, and there's a hole in the side of the, the body of the clamp. That hole's where the shear pin goes. And that threaded stud is how it, it uh, is held into the uh, testing machine. So let's see what that stud looks like. I'm going to draw it in cross section here. So there's some threads, and there's a, a unthreaded uh, barrel that goes down into the clamp, and then there's a hole right through it. Okay, and that's there's my threads there. That's not exactly threads, but you get the idea. And there's this hole that goes through it, and the pin goes down through that hole. Let's draw it from the side rather than the front. It's round, so it looks almost the same from the side. So that's from the front. And so let's, let's just have put that barrel in cross section here, and there's a pin that goes right through there. Well, the barrel is pulling up. The rest of the clamp is pulling down, so this thing is in double shear. Well, what does it look like when it fails? We found out. So here's a picture of a pin that has failed, and it actually sheared into three pieces, and there's a nice clean uh, shear face across each of the, the, where the pieces had gone together. The other pin is one that was close to failure. It had plastically deformed, but it hadn't actually broken into three pieces. Now friends, I'm here to tell you, it wasn't hard getting the broken pieces out. It was hard getting that deformed piece out because it was a fairly snug fit into all those holes before it deformed. After it deformed, we had to use a hammer and a punch to drive it out. But the good news is the pin failed, the clamp didn't. So the, the pin acted like a mechanical fuse. If you want to think of it that way, the pin gave its life for the clamp. So the, the structure overall failed, but the expensive part, that threaded stud and the clamp, they were fine. So when we overstressed it, we just drove the pin out, put another one in, and we could continue with the test. So even though we'd overstressed part of the, the uh, mechanism, we hadn't destroyed it. We, the only part we wrecked was the easiest, most replaceable part. So there you have it. There is a great example of failure in double shear. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.